Rumor has it. Rumor, rumor has it. Call out a name or you gossiping or you chatty patty. I'm gossiping. This is the Rumor Report. I mean, I guess we on The Breakfast Club. This is where the tea spills, right? Right. right. On The Breakfast Club. Because I'm used to getting straight to it, these clips are making me look extra messy, by the way. That's all good. Okay, I don't really care. Well, listen, Quentin Miller, you're a ghostwriter. We're not supposed to see you or hear you, but apparently here you are again in another interview. He sat down with my friend DJ Vlad to talk about another story about where the industry short-ended him. Now, you, your business ain't tied up, so that's why you got in this situation again. That's but this is what he said about working with Big Sean. I'm pulling up on Sean's crib every other day. I remember one day I'm at his crib, and I see the the BET Hip Hop Award for the for Bless. And I was just like, damn, I ain't know this one on an award. And he's just like, yeah, bro, you don't even know that song that helped me a lot, da da da. I'm like, man, this is a real, this is a full circle moment, bro. He's like, yeah, bro, this is full circle, this is full circle. So I'm really like looking up to it. And then maybe like two weeks, a week before uh, the album drops, he's, he's just not responding to me at all. Then like a week before, I'm in the studio with Hit Boy. I just randomly hear in a conversation with Hit, yeah, the album drop next week. I'm like, wait, what? I didn't even know. So then I start hitting him, and then I'm getting texts from his manager. Now I'm only talking to his manager. I'm like, well, what, what happened? Then the come out. We still ain't signed the paperwork or nothing. My name was not on the credits. Now he said that he thought that they were really good friends and that this really broke his heart. This sounds like a breakup. This is literally what guys say to me whenever I just stop returning their calls. Uh, now, I don't under, now I don't understand why, well maybe I do understand why he thought they were friends and then they were trying to do business and clearly. But, but let me ask you a question. And this is what I, I've always been you know, confused with Quentin Miller. Is he actually writing verses or is it one of those things that he's helping out with the hook? Because from when I hear his conversation, it seems like he's writing verses for these people that we Think of lyricists, whether it's Drake, whether it's, you know, with these Sean. interviews, it sounds like he's writing the whole song. I don't know. That's what I'm asking, you know? I don't know what it is, but I don't have a problem with Quentin telling his story because this is his story to tell. And when you hear stories like this, we shouldn't laugh, we should learn. Because Quentin didn't have his business together, and it's mm -hmm. not even his fault because he was new to the game. He was trusting artists. He probably didn't even understand how any of this works. But first things first, get you an entertainment lawyer. That's like saying you was in a relationship where you got abused, and you got in another relationship where you got abused again. You should have learned from the first experience how mm -hmm. to not get in certain situations or the, or the red flags. True. I mean, I, I would he, like to know the time period of all of this, though, because it sounds like all of this was happening at once. You know what I mean? Like, it sounds like this was all probably in the, a span of, like, a couple of months. six months to a year. Mm -hmm. But you the know? Drake story was so many years ago. Why are we talking about this now? Are we having, are we having flashbacks or something? I don't know. I, oh, Vlad yeah. probably asked him, though. But oh. because he's probably reflecting on all the times he did not get paid in his business. He's oh, probably he reflecting got, all the times he got got in his business. But it, sound, it seems like he thought Sean was his peoples and Sean was his homie and got burnt. Well, he said he DM'd him or texted him and he left him on red. <laughs> that was really sad. I guess it's good to tell the story because there are people out there that want to get in the business and he probably wants to help protect them from being taken advantage of. Yeah. Sure. But he said he was a ghost writer. They say he's a ghost writer. Another person that told me they were a ghost was Kanye West. Uh, when we were working together, he <laughs> called me one day and said, I'm dead. I said, no, you're not. You're on the phone. But anyway, he said he was a ghost. Well, this ghost just popped up. They, they couldn't find him for weeks and people were wondering where Ye was. Um, and now they can call off the search party because he's been found and he's been spotted with a new woman. That and they're saying white. he's now married to. He got married, got married yesterday, they said, right? But, yeah, but... But no leak, not legally. He ain't see no paperwork. She's white, too, though. Well, Kim's white. They <laughs> what all that white. What's that got to me? I'm just, I'm just throwing it? it out there. Y'all pro-black revolutionary king. Stay with a white woman. <laughs> so you Wait, Sean King is white, and he out here fighting for the culture? Sean King, King ain't white. white. That's what his birth certificate said. Y'all can believe whatever Jesus you want. Jesus Christ, Jason Lee. Why did Sean King get a shot? <laughs> what did Sean, how do you bring Sean King into this? Sean King the other day posted a GoFundMe. He posted some statement from GoFundMe saying he never scammed anybody out of GoFundMe's. But you got them petitions going with them emails and you running them campaigns and getting them money. I don't know what you're doing with it. But anyway, I, back to Kanye. I have no idea what, what Jason Lee is talking about. Put the chopper I, I away. Just, I just Jesus. don't like him. I don't know. He blocked me. I don't like him. Anyway, Kanye West was spotted <laughs> out with a white woman. And you know, <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's, a, <laughs> he's been at this woman's apartment every day, they said. Now, I did hear from the streets that they, they are interested in talking about engagement, but they are not married. And okay. we haven't seen any paperwork. And I think she used to work for Yeezy, right? She used to work for the company? I thought yeah, I seen they that said somewhere. She was, yeah, they said she was a Yeezy architect. You know, the, I will say head of media, Yeezy, Yeezy architect, those are real fancy titles. We just sitting around waiting for you to blow up the world and clean it up. That, that was your title, right, Jason? Yeah. Head of media? Mm-hmm. Anyway, move around. Did you ever get paid? <laughs> what? I got my payment, my, one payment for the whole year up front. Really? Yeah, I don't know. People be saying he don't pay. He paid me, and he took care of that real, real good. So, yeah.
But it didn't just the, the, the job doesn't last long, so you need yeah. to get your money. I left on my own terms. Everybody else was leaving before me on, on terms that they didn't control. Yeah. I stayed there for seven months, you know, but then they got a little crazy. But I did wear Yeezy Gap today. This is a collection that ain't coming out. Uh, just in support of Ye, because I knew we were talking about him. Okay. Hmm. All right. It's a well, little okay. gap. Huh? It's a little gap. Yeah. yeah. Well. It's... Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> no, Whoa. I'm saying. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> Whoa. You know what? Whoa. Whoa. Freaky, freaky, freaky Friday. I'm saying the gap is very Stop little with that with on this fingers, shirt. Bro. Stop that with your fingers. Is. Yeah, put your finger away. <laughs> Please, put that finger I want to get to a place where when I walk in the room, it ain't just, it, we don't go there. You know what? I ain't going to lie. Every time I'm in a room, I hear a joke, I feel gay. I'm like, yo, that was gay. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, somebody else being put on blast. Speaking of gay, um, let's oh, transition God. over here to Eddie Murphy. You know, Eddie Murphy was at this Christ. Eddie, what? Y'all Nothing. remember he was riding around with the trans? Hey, hey! God damn, Jason <laughs> y'all, get, Lee. y'all get one Cecil B. De, one Cecil what? B. DeMille Award, and y'all forget he was riding around ah! the streets of Hollywood. <laughs> oh! Whoa! Eddie Murphy Whoa! don't even. Jesus. Whoa! <laughs> Let him go. Eddie Murphy. Exactly. <laughs> Eddie Murphy don't come out the house much, but he came out at the Golden Globes. He got oh, the C- Cecil B. DeMille Award. Why? We can't talk about Eddie hey, Murphy. Hey, man. Do the damn story, Jason. Go ahead, Jason. <laughs> His that? selective memory is killing me over here. Anyway, um, he was at the awards. He said this joke that, you know, p- made some people upset. This was the joke he said. Go ahead. Listen. I want to let you know that there is a, a definitive blueprint that you can follow to achieve success, prosperity, longevity, and peace of mind. It's a blueprint, and I followed it my whole career. It's very simple. There's three things you just do. These three things. Pay your taxes. (laughs) Mind your business. And keep Will Smith's wife's name Now, who would that upset other than Will and Chris? Well, Tyrese posted something on <laughs> Tyrese posted something on Instagram, and he said, um, uh, "Let's just move on." I mean, hey, move on already. I just watched Emancipation for the third time, and I can't. I just can't believe how masterful this overall movie is. Hashtag My Brother's Keeper. I seen it. Emanci- Have you seen Emancipation? No, I haven't watched I haven't it. I've seen it. I've seen it twice. Uh, anyway, it was a good movie, and uh, it was about Will Smith being freed as a slave, and he's still not free from this apparently. But Ray J wants him free because now he slid in a comment. And he went in the comment section, and uh, let me see what he said. Oh, Tyrese better mind his own business. You not on, you not on Eddie level to sort of think that you can call Axel Foley from or Hakeem the Prince of Zamunda to move on already. I don't mean he's basically saying he wants smoke. Yeah, he wants smoke. Well, but people are calling him out because he didn't have anything to say for uh, this unfunny comedian who had a lot to say about Whitney Houston, and they used to date. What's the Ray J correlation with Eddie? Nothing. Nothing. I, yeah. But yeah, it's just something to say. I mean, but I mean, he didn't have anything to say about Whitney, and that's what people are upset about because him and Whitney used to date. Mm. Oh, I get what you say. So they wanted him to call out Gerard Carmichael. And, okay, I get it. Yeah, and not just Tyrese. But I, I also it. understand like that was really sensitive time for Ray J because he was with her the night before, and he was there when she was found, you know, dead. Yeah, so. yeah absolutely. Yeah. All I just right. want to go there again. Well, that's Jason Lee with the T. Thank you, Jason. Eddie Lee. Murphy's still with ah! the T. <laughs> this guy, man. So, man, who are you giving that donkey to, man? Four after the hour, we need Dennis Perkins to come to the front of the congregation. Uh, Dennis Perkins is the person that was putting uh, the barf balls in the brownies. We'll talk about it. All right, we'll get to that next. It's the Breakfast Club. Good morning. 